We'll make three delicious types of Turkish delight today. Let's go over the history first because it's fascinating, but feel free to skip ahead to the timestamp recipes. We don't know the exact origin of Turkish delight. Some sources allege it was invented in the late 18th century in Istanbul. The Sultan of the Ottoman Empire at the time, Abdulhamid I, was sick and tired of having to eat hard candy and craved a softer option. He was quite resourceful, being the emperor and all, so he summoned his confectioners and demanded a soft candy to satisfy his sweet tooth. And Turkish delight was born. The name in Turkish, lokum, comes from rahat ul hulkum in Arabic, which means comfort her to throw exactly what the Sultan must have been looking for. Yet another leading theory is that an independent confectioner named Hajj Bekir Efendi invented lokum of his own volition around the same time. His candy store became quite famous and Sultan Mahmud II made him head confectioner to the Ottoman court. When scientists invented the modern refined sugar and cornstarch in the 1800s, Bikir Efendi changed his original recipe. He replaced great molasses with refined sugar and flour with cornstarch, the binding agent that gives Turkish delight the distinct chewiness we know it for today. Later on in the 19th century, Lokum made its way to the West when British travelers who loved this exotic candy brought cases of it back to Britain. Importation to England officially began in 1861. Here you see that piece of news reported by Punch magazine in a cartoon, and this is horrifying. They first introduced it as lumps of delight. Thankfully, the name that ended up sticking was Turkish delight instead. When C.S. Lewis first started writing The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe, the world looked very different. Because of World War II, confectionery items were rationed in Britain. By the time the book was finally published in 1950, the allowance was still half a pound of candy per person per month. If you could afford it, of course. That's why it makes so much sense that Edmund Pevensey's Wish from the White Witch is a candy that is made almost entirely of sugar. Something luxurious and out of reach. Thankfully, sugar or confectionaries are no longer rationed today. In fact, we kind of have the opposite problem, which may explain why, nowadays, many in the Western world who try it for the first time believe that Turkish delight is kind of overrated. Personally, I just don't think they've had the real thing yet, because it's very easy to mess up the centuries-old recipe. Case in point, many European confectioners tried to replicate lokum in those earlier days, but were never successful. When British Secretary of State for foreign affairs even blame the water as the main reason of that failure. Which brings us to today. Even though the ingredients are extremely basic, Turkish delight is difficult to consistently get right. When I was researching this recipe, I saw disappointment after disappointment by people who claim they wasted hours on a sugary, inedible food. I think the problem is how the many intricacies of the recipe aren't always effectively communicated. Even with all that research, it took me 13 tries to get this recipe spot on consistently. Here's a comparison between plain lokum that I brought back from my favorite shop in Turkey two months ago and the one I made last week. They taste almost exactly the same and the textures are very similar. Now finally, we can make it together. Let's begin with the most famous of them all, rose. Pour 350 grams of sugar into a heavy bottomed pan. Make sure it's regular white sugar as the less processed yellow looking varieties will make it difficult to judge the final steps of our recipe. Then add a quarter teaspoon of citric acid to prevent sugar crystallization. Cream of tartar basically does the same thing so you can use that instead in the same quantity but you do not need to use them both. Alternatively, you can also substitute with a tablespoon of lemon juice but this does alter the flavor a little bit. Now add three quarters of a cup of water and mix until the sugar is dissolved. Turn on the heat and bring the mixture to a boil. Once it's boiling, lower the heat way down to a simmer and wait until the syrup reaches 250 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll take at least 15 minutes depending on your stove's heat output. Meanwhile, let's mix our starch. Now, there are so many recipes directing you to cook the starch separately first and I have no idea where this came from. From all my research, I found zero Turkish manufacturers that use this method, but I was curious, so I gave it a few tries while recipe testing and the result was very finicky. During one such test, I just ended up with a lumpy mess, basically. Um, you just cook that for a little bit and then it's just a matter of adding the syrup to the corn flour, which is the worst part, really. Right, that's where everything <laughs> that's go horribly everything wrong. Go wrong. 
I agree, Mr. Hollywood, and we absolutely do not need to do that. Instead, we'll simply mix 70 grams of cornstarch with two and a quarter cups of water. You could just whisk this with a fork and add it in, but vigorously shaking it in a jar like this is a foolproof method guaranteeing you will not get any lumps. In terms of substitutions, there is no perfect alternative. That's because each type of starch is different and has its own distinctive proportions of amylose and amylopectin, resulting in different qualities like different gelation temperature ranges, consistency, or stability on prolonged heat. And back to our syrup. It's been going for about 15 minutes and needs more time to get to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. A candy thermometer is highly recommended and if you're using it, make sure you're reading it right. Here I measured the temperature of boiling water to see if the thermometer is working correctly. Another important point is the altitude of your kitchen. If you're making this in, say, Denver, which is over 5,000 feet above sea level, you'll want to read 240 instead of 250 in case you don't have a thermometer but want to give it a go anyway, go for the cold water test. We're looking for the hard ball stage, meaning that once you pour a small amount of the simmering syrup into cold water, it should form a hard but malleable ball between your fingers. But you need to be very quick in doing this because the heating rate accelerates very rapidly after about 220 degrees because of the high sugar concentration in the syrup. Here's an example of what happens when the mixture gets way too hot. You get a taffy-like texture that's nowhere near Turkish delight. It looks just like this other traditional Turkish candy called majun, actually. So once we reach our magic temperature of 250, turn off the heat and immediately start adding the cornstarch mixture. You want to do this gradually and be constantly whisking to make sure there are no lumps. When all the starch is incorporated, turn the heat on to medium-low and continue whisking until gelation. It should only take a minute or two. Once it's thickened, put the heat on low and make sure to mix it about every 7-8 to eight minutes so that nothing sticks to the bottom. You also want to be somewhat gentle when mixing, otherwise the starch granules will break and our Turkish delight will thin out considerably. A little thinning is expected, but it basically shouldn't go back to the way it was before thickening. We'll continue doing this for about one and a half to two hours. It's really not a quick process. Meanwhile, let's prepare the mold. In Turkey, local manufacturers use rimmed wooden trays that are sprinkled with a layer of cornstarch. I found that a neutral oil works as well, so here I'm spreading some of it on a 5x7 inch glass container. At this point, our mixture has been cooking for almost 2 hours. We're looking for a relatively thick but not gloopy texture and a medium dark shade of amber. We'll add 1.5 teaspoons of rose water and about 10 drops of red food dye. Give it a mix, pour into the container, and set aside at room temperature for at least 5 hours. Preferably a full day, especially if you live somewhere hot and humid. When the Turkish delight is set, sprinkle cornstarch into the container, then cut out a strip from the edge so that you can remove the entire slab. Using plastic wrap would have been useful, but when I did it, there were far too many creases on the surface and I didn't like that. Sprinkle with more cornstarch, then cut into strips. You can make them in any shape you prefer, cubes are the most common. Once they're cut, dredge them in a mixture of two-thirds of a cup of cornstarch and a third of a cup of powdered sugar. Alright, our rose-flavored Turkish delight is ready for us to enjoy. For orange and pistachio lokum, the steps are almost identical. We're only substituting a very small amount of the water in the cornstarch mixture with orange juice, just 50 milliliters. If you have orange extract, you could also use that just like we did rose water. Again, after cooking this mixture for about 2 hours, it takes a dark amber color. We can add a few drops of yellow and red food colorings, but this is completely optional. I'm also mixing in a quarter of a cup of orange peel and one cup of pistachio meat. Pour it into an oil container, set aside for at least 5 hours, and it's ready to be coated. Many types of lokum in Turkey, I'd say almost 50% of them actually, are covered with shredded coconut nowadays. It serves the same purpose as starch and provides an additional fatty flavor and texture, so it's completely up to you. Last but not least is one of my absolute favorites, the double roasted walnut lokum. Again, the initial steps are identical to the original recipe. This time, I wanted to add a little bit of pumpkin spice, but the plain one is delicious as well. We'll also mix in one cup of walnuts, pour, and set aside. Here's the exciting part. Once we dredge the cut pieces and shredded coconut, we'll bake them in 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes. The day after baking them, the texture gets a bit harder and chewier. That's that's why I love double roasted delights.
Look who makes a great gift for Christmas. Just as time consuming as making sugar cookies, but much easier to store and to transport. To enjoy lokum in the most Turkish way possible, try serving it with Turkish coffee as is traditional in Turkey. Next week's AG in the Light video will be all about Turkish coffee, so consider signing up to be notified. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and share. This helps the channel a ton and I always appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, be well.